Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jim Ron. Today we're going to try to figure out what in the world is Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. This is uh, basically a Borderlands game. And it's kind of a standalone expansion on the franchise. It's a lot better than 3. And definitely a lot better than 2, in my opinion. But uh, that's because of the setting. I really, I really do appreciate the setting on this game, but... Before we get into that, as usually, we're going to check out the options real quick. You have a few a few options uh, that are here that I really do appreciate, but I'm also going to condemn the game for lacking some options, and I'm going to get to that immediately after this. So you got some graphics API here. You can switch between DirectX versions, uh, display. You can choose your display monitor, which is great. Uh, display mode, all that good stuff. Resolution is automatic on borderless. A vertical sync, I have it off because it's forced on through my NVIDIA control panel for G-Sync to take to take place. And the FPS limit, all that good stuff is here. Field of view, I'll find 100 to be perfect for an ultra-wide monitor. And then you got advanced. So you have a, a plethora of options here, but not quite all the ones that I would have liked to see. Uh, and, and the ones missing are the most important ones. So you got graphics quality, anti-aliasing and all this stuff, uh, display stats. Uh, if you want to see what your performance is like, uh, you got environmental options like draw distance, clutter, terrain, detail, uh, foliage, volumetric fog, and screen space reflection. All that is good stuff. Characters, uh, post processing. Here, here's where it gets a little bit annoying for me. Um, you have motion blur. There's no depth of field option. There's no chromatic aberration option. There's no vignette option. Uh, did I say depth of field? Yeah, that was my first one. So those three options are missing and they're not even bundled into under one setting, which would already have been a, a terrible thing. But since I turn all those off regardless, if they were bundled under one option, fine. That would have been perfect. But they're not. They're not even present. So I had to download and install a mod, which is very easy. Uh, if you Google chromatic aberration uh, and, and post effects, you can find a mod. It has a few versions of it. You can uh, disable um, lens flares and all that stuff, which actually do make the game look better. I wouldn't turn off every single post effects option uh, because the lens flare actually adds a little bit of a, a, a taste to the, to the image. I don't mind that, it's not intrusive. But when, when I looked at the edges here before I turned all those settings off, it was just so distorted. It's all the trees were like there was like four trees there. Um, everything was like darkened around. Uh, there was a, a aggressive depth of field, and I don't understand why force it in the fucking game. That's such a that's such a fucking like even um, indie studios don't do that anymore. And and this studio has been around for such a long time, and the game is such an improvement over the previous iterations, in my opinion. And it's just it's just shameful. It's just it's just bad. Uh, what I do like though is that when you change the settings and everything, the world is here. You can you can kind of take them see see them take effect immediately. AMD FSR is off because man. Even on quality, everything just looks so much worse. Uh, it's just ridiculous. So the details here on the ship, it just all gets lost and there's no sharpness anymore. Uh, you can increase the sharpness. It doesn't do anything for me. I just think that it looks significantly worse with the uh, FSR. So I, I always have it. I always have it off. Uh, which which is fine. I mean, if, if your system is struggling, I would rather just turn off some of the settings instead of have that play. But that's just my opinion. And then you have a benchmark option, which is pretty cool. Uh, you have some sound options. You have uh, pretty much settings for all of it, which is pretty good. It's all separated. You got control options. Uh, sensitivity is always high for me because my DPI on my mouse is really high. And then you have some controller options. And then you can just adjust... Uh, your mouse and keyboards and everything, which is pretty cool. Uh, you got some gameplay options. I have the relaxed difficulty because I'm a piece of shit and I'm not good at video games, even though I, I do play video games. Uh, tutorial, um, uh, reticle position is pretty is pretty useful as well. Uh, mini map rotation and all that other good stuff. Uh, network and social and accessibility. Got some accessibility options here as well, which is pretty nice. Um, I forgot to turn the, the bob a little bit down. I'm just going to turn it down to half. 
So yeah, this is where the sprint and crouch toggle options are. I wish they were just in the control. I don't consider that an accessibility. It's a preference. I don't have an accessibility issue, but eh, just nitpicking at this point. My main issue with this game is uh, is in the visuals and the post effects. I just find it despicable that it's not there. Uh, but this is uh, Tiny Tina's Wonderland. So the way this game works in the intro, you'll see that it's... Uh, a few friends that got together and they're just playing a D&D &D tabletop game and it's actually really really fun so you're just walking around in this uh, main hub here which can arguably be considered a waste of time uh, but uh, why is Queens get a zero percent that's weird uh, but it's actually fun and it, it, it really gives you that feeling of, uh, of being in a uh, and the tabletop experience and these grass patches here if you walk through them it's kind of like kind of like works like pokemon where you might get a chance for a random encounter but uh you can just outrun that that npc and not have to deal with it and you might want to do that because the game does get quite repetitive so that is tiny tina there and she's telling me there's a shrine piece in this dungeon but i also have to go through this dungeon in order to get to the next part of this uh, over map here this is not a, a a real mission this is not part of the actual uh big worlds uh this is an optional thing that you can do and i'm i'm doing it just so i can see so i can show a little bit of the gameplay here and all that stuff so i have a shotgun that fires three rounds and when it's time to reload it actually throws the shotgun instead of reloading and it creates two servants, uh, it creates a servant, sorry, uh, that fights for you for, I believe, just a, a, a few seconds. It's not that long of a time. I just got blown the hell up, and I was thrown through the rest of the map. It's hard to play this game and talk at the same time, but I'm going to try my best. So, in this dungeon here, what I'm trying to do is just get past through it. You see, it says uh, clear the encounter, and I'm just trying to clear the encounter so I can proceed through the next either level or exit through the uh, the other side of the map and I can proceed. Where is this dude? Uh, I like this these shotguns because they can actually shoot through walls. As you can see, I'm, I'm shooting through the wall and I'm still damaging the person. Uh, I am playing as a... Fuck, what was I playing with? Uh, let me see. <laughs> uh, skills. We're going to look at the skill tree here. I'm, I'm playing... My main, uh, my main class is Grave, uh, Graveborn. And Graveborn has a pet that you can summon, pet companion. And then eventually, after a, a few hours into the game, you're going to be able to unlock a second class. I googled what the best class to unlock would be, and everybody was saying Spellweaver uh, for meta. I hate this class. I don't know why I picked it. It's supposed to give you a lot of like burst on your weapons and your spells, so I'm guessing once I level it up as well, we're, we're going to have a little bit more fun, hopefully. But I do like the Graveborn, uh, Graveborn uh, class. There was another one that summoned another weaver, uh, another pet, which was like a, a wyvern, and um, a mushroom, like a spore mushroom. It was uh, like a poison class. Those classes will allow you to have two companions if you have them at the same time. The good thing is that towards the end game, you're going to be able to change your secondary class and respect the entire thing. So it's not the end of the day, the, uh, the end of the world, if you... Uh, pick the wrong class that you're not happy with. Do not worry about it. You will be able to change that class uh, in in closer to the end game, I believe, is what what the game said. But uh, that's that's the that's the class here. I always found the 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 stats, the the class level ups for Borderland games a little bit uh, uninspiring. They just give you a little bit more boost and everything, uh, and some passives. I do prefer passives over active uh, uh, spells, but each class has two main spells. Uh, one, This one is, uh, is like a, a huge area of effect thing that sacrifices your health. This one uh, fully heals you and gives you some bonuses. This one turns enemies into sheep. And this one allows you to have two secondary spells, which is pretty cool. I am using my main one. This is what it looks like. You just kind of blow up and unleash a field of energy that does a, a significant amount of damage, I would say. Uh, that sword was actually pretty good. Might have been better what I have uh, equipped right now. And I'm going to kill you real quick so we can proceed. Yeah, when you throw the weapon, uh, insta it doesn't just form a wyvern. It, it, pretty much explodes and does a little bit more damage 
I am a huge fan of this game's aesthetics. I absolutely love the aesthetics. I love the setting as well. It's really interesting to me. When I first saw uh, this game, and I was really contemplating on purchasing, but now on Steam, it's like less than $20. So that was kind of a no-brainer for me, and I'm really glad I tried it because I always pick up uh, my... I'll take my reward. Where's my reward? It's like a reward how do I get up there? I realize the mouse movement is going to be a little bit obnoxious for some people because that's what borderline games are for. You kind of have to move around a lot a little bit. So I have my Steam Deck, obviously, and I do play it. Uh, can I exit through the other side now? Yes, I can. All right, you punch that bottle cap. It's, this is a really nice setting, honestly. It's just... This is a real bottle cap. Uh, you punch it to create a a uh, shortcut to the back, so you don't have to do that again. Uh, you have these dice that you have to uh, pick up in the world, and they give you a little bit better loot every time you unlock them. So here's that. We got a ten. I cannot jump there yet, which is kind of sad because there's a lot of stuff to do there. But I'm just gonna have to wait for it. So there's another bottle bottle cap here, but I have to actually be able to jump. I'm guessing eventually I'm gonna get an ability that makes me jump or it's gonna have a bridge there like before. Um, there was a, there was a point where there was like a Cheeto blocking my road and the narrator Tiny Tina she just kind of made a quest of it which which was great. It was really really fun. And I do on my Steam Deck I do play Borderlands 3 a lot and I kind of stopped right now because it's pretty much getting to be the same thing over and over again and I don't I don't appreciate it as much as I used to so I I do like the setting on this one here it's given me a reason to come back to a Borderlands game the only downside I have with the game really is just how repetitive it gets so some of these side quests not some of them but mostly all of them I ignore there was one that I really I'm really glad I picked up it's because it opened up a new area a whole new area you pretty much get a so yeah, the ones the, the exclamation marks with the uh, that look like that are pretty much big quests. They're not small quests, so it, it'd probably be best if you actually grab them. I do suspect eventually I'm going to be able to jump in this world because I can't make that any other way. So let's we'll see how that goes. Let me see if I can actually get this quest here. Yep. So this will definitely give us uh, something to do, which is fun. No random encounter. That's okay, bad. we're good. So let's switch back to the main. Oh shit, I died. And did I lose money? No, you don't lose money on this one. You do lose money if you lose uh, in the game. Shrine piece in here. Thank you, Tina. I, yeah, uh, it does get repetitive a little bit. You just kind of go clearing camps all over the place over and over again. And uh, I'm not a huge fan of that one. The shrine pieces, there's four shrine pieces that you have to collect to get the shrine bonus. It's just four different, um, let's see, <clears throat> this one is probably going to let us jump on there. Uh, it's just, it does get repetitive again, yeah, but the, 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 the setting itself is great, the voice acting is great, the music is great, I really love the music, the soundtrack in this game is just... It's simply amazing. I love the flow of the game too. It's, it, it feels a little bit more mobile. It feels a little bit more uh, easy to navigate than, than previous installments. Um, I don't know how to explain it, but the only downside... Oh, there's a random encounter. We're just going to kind of try to run and get to the ruins. They're not going to follow us. The only downside really um, is the weapons for me. Most of the weapons kind of suck, and that's been the case with a lot of these games anyway, I believe. Even in Borderlands 3, I've finally found a, a few weapons that I'm really into, and I've unlocked the fourth weapon slot in that game as well. I've been playing it for a lot longer than this, but I feel like I've made a lot more progress in this game than I had in Borderlands 3, even though I've been playing this for a lot longer. But I really do wish that the loot was a little bit more fun. So my worst type of weapon in this game are the crossbows. They fire 
arrow bolts typically as a crossbow would of course uh, you can't complain about that but what is kind of annoying with those is that you have to kind of aim higher because they don't reach the destination uh, as far as uh, you would think they would but at the same time you grab a like a sniper rifle that is bolt uh, bolt based and it it doesn't reach anywhere it's just it's kind of sitting there you just kind of have to aim a little bit higher and uh, it's just it's inconvenient what's the point of having a sniper rifle that won't reach half of the destination that you're trying to get it's just a lot more thinking and, and brain power to put into it than I was planning on, on putting in. But for now, I found my, my weapons here. I have a heavy weapon, which is kind of like a rocket launcher, which is pretty cool. Uh, I have this, which is the shotgun that I mentioned earlier. And then I have a pistol that also does fire damage. I should probably find some more elemental weapons to use. Probably a shock weapon or a snow weapon or whatever, but... I I think besides the, the, the slight repetitiveness of this game, this is one of the only games lately that's been having me just sit there and play it uh, back to back, and, and I, I can't complain about that, honestly. Uh, Borderlands 3 didn't do that for me, I was kind of just getting through it, if I'm being honest. Ooh, that's a lot of damage. There we go. You too, you can get it too. But nothing beats the shotgun. Oh, immune. Oh, okay. Oh, you're not immune to this. Alright, get back here. It's a lot of damage. Take that. Oh, man, I didn't even have the chance. I just spell killed him. My companion does a lot of damage lately, too, which is pretty cool. Oh, that's a boss. It's a little bit of a boss. Also, the, the, the loot um, value is somewhat laughable. I have only gotten a handful of uh, yellow that. items, like uh, rare items, legendaries or whatever you want to call them. I'm not convinced yet, like I, I'm i not super thrilled about the loot just yet. I wish it was a little bit better than what it is right now. It's just, you know, killing this, this, this enemy, that would have been nice if it dropped something really valuable, but it doesn't. It just drops this, which I have a significantly better item equipped, and then the sword here is questionable, uh, and a lot of the times a really rare weapon is going to be a, a crossbow item, and I'm just, I don't care, I, I don't want to, I don't want to use a crossbow anymore, in the beginning that's pretty much all you get, which kind of blows, but, there we go, give me that, uh, the game does have, uh, does rely heavily on exploration, oh, that's, yeah, that's sealed, we cannot go through there yet, probably after we get more shrine pieces. It's heavy on exploration, and it's heavy on just repeating some of the quests, but they're fun nonetheless. I think this is my favorite Borderlands game. Um, the only other complaint I have with the game is that you can't really skip any of the dialogue, like this one, this dialogue here. I don't really care about it. I just want to skip it. Uh, but some of the dialogue is, is pretty good. I just did the, the pirate quest line, and that was probably the second most fun for me the most fun for me was the one um with the with the beanstalk that i mentioned earlier you just do a side quest and then you pretty much create a whole new map that you can oh there we go it shows you bridges so maybe there was a bridge up there that's pretty cool all right that's i like that i might have to backtrack there and get those shrine pieces but yeah, that was the second most fun quest. The the, the quest lines are, are very fun. They they do add a lot of value to the game. And yeah, this is this is my favorite Borderlands game. Technically not a Borderlands game, but it's a Borderlands game. Let's let's just be real. Bye bye crab. My bad. You too. You can get it too. I remember when I was your favorite. Huh. Dragon Roll, the, the villain is uh, very funny, the voice acting is very funny, the chemistry of all the characters is very funny. Um, occasionally, Tina will jump in and kind of tell you some things and, and make it more interesting. It's just, the setting is what wins me over for me. You get a Borderlands game, which is fun already, but you make it even more fun um, by putting it in the setting. So, that's pretty much it. It's, it's less than $20 on Steam right now. 
I think for 20 bucks, you're going to get a lot of fun out of it. And I've already been playing for over 10 hours. So I think this is one of the games that I'm going to actually finish before I get to the next one. So, yeah, hopefully this was uh, helpful. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.